called, uh, This is the Way I Remember It. Not that it matters, but most of this is true. <laughs> when I was six years old, I set foot onto a t-ball diamond for the first time. I was skinny, awkward, and unsure of myself. I was basically a smaller version of the teenager and adult I'd eventually become. And I didn't have very good coordination. But my dad loved baseball. And I knew that if my dad loved it, then I loved it too. Because that's the way things work when you're six. It was the spring of 1978. Smog alerts were as common as reality show as reality shows are today, and hazy reddish gold sunlight shone down on the field at Sunland Park. The sounds of other kids playing on the swings and in the giant rocket ship at the playground mingled with the smell of barbecue smoke as I stepped up to the plate to take my first practice swings. Talking baseball, little Will is playing. Talking baseball, he's such a little slugger. My first swing connected with the middle of the tee. The baseball, in those days of gas lines, wearing sweaters, and national malaise, we didn't have the soft, reduced injury balls my kids got to play with. It fell off and landed in the batter's box on the other side of the plate. The other kids giggled while the coach clapped his hands and shouted encouraging words to me as I picked up the ball and put it back on the tee. I looked up and saw my father's expectant face through the chain link fence near the dugout. I slowly and deliberately lifted my bat, held it out at arm's length, and aimed at the top of the tee with one eye closed. I stuck out my tongue and furrowed my brow. I tasted sweat on the corners of my mouth and felt my heartbeat in my ears. The bat touched the ball and it fell off again. <laughs> kids giggled, the coach clapped. I replaced the ball on the tee. Come on, Willow, my dad said. You can do it. I took a deep breath, held the bat as tightly as I could, and I swung for the fences. Talking baseball, everybody's watching. Talking baseball, it's getting a little bit awkward. The ball sailed off the tee toward right field. I watched it go, absolutely astonished that it was in the air, just like a real baseball player. <laughs> run to first, Will, run fast! It was my dad, excitedly hollering at me through the fence, joy in his voice. I dropped the bat and ran as fast as I could, my track shoes kicking up small puffs of rust-colored dust the whole way. Talking baseball, start they talk in baseball. I'm sure this will all turn out well. <laughs> that was great, Will, said the coach. Okay, who's next? I went back to the dugout and watched the other kids bat around. Most of them were more successful than I was, except for one kid named Brian, who wore glasses, had perpetual bed head, and a nose that only stopped running when he jammed his fingers into it. Brian was last. He hit a grounder to short, and the coach gathered us together at home plate, where he told us to take a knee. I looked around uncertainly until the kid next to me kneeled down. Oh, take a knee, I thought. I get it. <laughs> cool. I took a knee. <laughs> and I looked up at him. He had the kind of beard and sunglasses you'd expect to see on a suburban Little League coach in 1978. <laughs> or Jonathan Colton today. <laughs> He wore a dirty baseball jersey with yellow sleeves. That was great, everyone, he said. Now, we're gonna hit some balls without the tee. What? <laughs> the thought of a ball being thrown at me filled me with dread. Wasn't avoiding that the whole point of tee ball? I looked for my dad as I walked back to home plate. We made eye contact, and he must have seen how terrified I was. You'll be fine, Willow, he said. He smiled. My dad was proud of me. Dad believed in me. Baseball, you need some reassurance. Baseball, don't be such a pussy. <laughs> I stepped into the batter's box and picked up my bat. I held it high, pointing it to the sky, just like my dad had shown me in our front yard. I looked at the pitcher's mound, where the coach's son, a big kid named Kenny, got ready to deliver the ball. Kenny was a year older than me and probably outweighed me by 15 pounds. 
He had shaggy long hair and kind of looked like a male version of Tatum O'Neill in the Bad News Bears. He began his wind up and I lost my nerve. I looked up at my father. Dad, I'm scared. The ball hit me in the side of the face, just above my left cheek, with a soft smack that sounded like a gunshot inside my head. There was a collective groan from the other kids and a few gasps from the adults. I fell to the ground and I burst into tears. Should have put the footage on YouTube. My dad ran out onto the field, helped me up, and inspected my face. There wasn't any blood, and it didn't look like it was going to bruise. Like most childhood injuries, the fear was worse than the actual wound. The coach asked me if I wanted to try again. I'm sure there were kids who would have bravely stood up and tried again, but I was not one of those kids. I shook my head and hugged my dad. Kenny joined us. I'm really sorry, he said. It's okay, I mumbled. I think I'm going to take him home, my dad told the coach. Okay, I said. We'll see you next week. When we got into the car, my dad took a closer look at my face. You're going to be okay, he said. We'll put some ice on it when we get home. Two miles, one stoplight, and three stop signs separated the park from our house. By the time we got to the second stop sign, I was completely under control. My face stung a little bit, but that was it. My dad put his hand on my shoulder and he said, kindly, you just took your eye off the ball. <laughs> next time, next time, <laughs> the whole thing flooded back to me. Kenny's wind up, the ball speeding into me, the sound it made when it crashed into my face. <laughs> I burst into tears. I don't, don't want to play the big baseball anymore. I cried. played baseball from grade school all the way to college. Baseball, Dodger baseball specifically, was more than a game in my dad's family. It was religion. Okay, he said gently, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Maybe you can try again next year. I didn't try again the next year, or ever. I just wasn't good at baseball. I was not going to be good at baseball, but that was okay. Because my dad accepted me as the cerebral, weird, geeky kid who just wasn't that good at or interested in sports. Well, the cats in the curls. <laughs> he respected that I wasn't competitive and that I was happier pretending to be an elven wizard leading a group of adventurers into a dungeon to fight beholders than a kid nobody wanted on their team, standing on a baseball field, hoping the ball didn't ever come anywhere near me. <laughs> the most important tool a writer has in his imagination, I'm sorry, the most important tool a writer has is his imagination. <laughs> and it's pretty important for actors as well. Seeing as how I support my family by doing both, I am grateful that, as a child, I was encouraged to embrace the things I loved that also happens to help my imagination develop. Because today, in my imagination, I am one hell of a baseball player. <laughs>